When I was 17, I accidentally discovered a learning technique so effective that I used it to take a two-year A-level maths course in three months. I got over 95% in the exam, and thanks to that, I got into a top university. I also got into a lot of trouble. I want to share that technique with you. That's what I'm looking for. And tell you how I found it. And to do that, we need to go back in time to my school days. Final year of A-levels, my future depends on passing maths and it's not going well, not at all. At this point, I know I need a miracle. So I asked my teacher, Mr. Parkinson. Sir, I, I don't understand linear algebra or vectors or calculus. <laughs> really, we shouldn't have let someone like you on the course. Work hard, you might get a D, but maths isn't for you. Yes, that happened. A couple of days later, as I was sitting in an empty maths classroom, wondering how to turn things around, a man walked in. Anyone can learn maths, he said. I'll help you, and I promise you'll get more than a D. I was doubtful, but I had no other options. So we agreed that I'd see him twice a week for half an hour during break. I turned up for the first session, and he handed me a stack of A4 papers. Pick one. At the top was a handwritten question, and underneath a handwritten answer. But part of the solution was missing. Fill in the gaps. But I don't know how to do this. You learn maths by doing maths. Fill in the gaps. So I tried. If I got stuck, he told me to write down what was a reasonable answer and give it a go. He gave me sheets to fill out between our sessions. If I ran out before the next lesson, I went to a textbook and worked through the examples in the same way, covering up parts of the solution and then figuring it out. No thanks. Within just a couple of weeks, my confidence had grown. In Mr. Parkinson's lessons, I'd spot errors that he'd made and pointed them out. He didn't like that. Mr. Simpson, my new teacher, gave me more and more sheets to complete, hundreds, but some of these were now getting too easy. So I deliberately selected questions that were more challenging on topics that I didn't understand. After a couple of months, I'd answered every single question in every textbook in the entire maths department, thousands of them. And then we had the mock exam, the final test before the actual A-level. You were allowed three hours to complete it. I finished in 90 minutes and left the room. In the next maths class with Mr. Parkinson, everybody got their result. Well, everybody except me. I was told to stay behind. After the class was dismissed, Mr. Parkinson looked at me in disbelief and said, You scored 99% in your mock exam. There was a pause. I waited for the praise and congratulations and possibly even an apology for being so dismissive about me previously. That didn't come. Instead, tell me how you did it. What? How you cheated is the only explanation for you scoring so high. I'm just curious to know. I didn't cheat. Okay, well your result is disqualified and you won't be receiving the prize for coming top in the exam. Off you go. That's what happened. I went on to take the A-level, found it just as easy and scored top marks. Mr. Simpson's learning method was by far the most effective learning technique that anyone has ever taught me, certainly when I was at school. And if you can't quite work out what it is, don't worry, I'm going to explain it in detail shortly. But it, <laughs> the whole, whole experience was tainted really because it was quite traumatizing because the school never accepted that I hadn't cheated in those exams. And I was banned from the maths department. I was banned from going to maths class. They wouldn't let me in the, in the room. And I was almost expelled from, from the school. Uh, so those last three uh, months at school were, were awful. Um, I, I don't know, it's quite sad, really. The other sad thing is that Mr. Simpson was a part-time temporary teacher. I met him by chance, and because he, was, well, he wasn't brought in to teach me, and, and he, he just went and vanished one day. I never saw him again, so I, ne I never even got a chance to say thank you. Anyway, you want to know the learning method, and it's coming up next. It's difficult to learn if you're feeling anxious. I know that, and it's why I dropped out of my first attempt at university. I was 18, struggling with my mental health. It got worse. I was finding it difficult to cope. I didn't talk to anyone. I just bottled it up and tried to battle through it. But I guess inevitably that didn't work, and I ended up leaving my course and university. Now if I notice my mental health start to slide, I get therapy and talk to someone which is why I'm really pleased to have this paid partnership with BetterHelp, because I've experienced the difference that therapy makes, and I know how vital it is to care for your mental health. 
The learning techniques I share on this channel are effective, but they won't work if you're struggling with your mental health. BetterHelp connects you to a credentialed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. You can do it all from your phone or computer, via phone call, video chat, or messaging, however you feel most comfortable. It's an easy way to start talking to a therapist. Let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you all from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash Python or choose Python during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. Okay, so here's how you can do what I did. Here is the method. And in case you're wondering why I'm doing this now, a few of you suggested I read this book, Ultra Learning by Scott Young. Scott Young is well known for, for learning. He learned the MIT computer curriculum, which is a four year course. He learned that in one year. He learned two languages in six months um, and other things too. And I read this book recently and as I read through it and he described his method, it struck me that his method was very similar to the method that Mr. Simpson, or the, the method that I discovered through Mr. Simpson. Now, he says that you need nine steps to mastering something quickly. I think you can do it in seven. So here are the seven steps. Step one, learn how to learn the thing you want to learn. This is where I got lucky with Mr. Simpson. He knew the best way to learn maths. Whatever it is that you want to learn, you need to figure out the best way to do it. You can do that on the internet, but I still think books are best. You can go to a library and if you do that, you can speak to librarians and they know loads. If you can't go to a library, use the internet, but do it carefully because you can easily become distracted. And finding the best price to quality ratio for that air fryer that you want to buy is not doing research. Step two, focus. You're gonna to have to dedicate time if you really want to do this. I had two sessions a week with Mr. Simpson and in between those, I would find an empty maths classroom and work through those problem sheets and the questions. You have to do the same. Find somewhere with no distractions, a place where you can work. Try the library, you'll find a space there. Step three, do the thing that you want to be good at. I needed to get better at solving maths problems, so I solved a lot of maths problems. Now, Mr. Simpson's worksheets started me on that track and gave me the confidence to do it. What do you need to do? Do that and don't waste time on other tasks. Step four, find your weakest points and work on those. After a couple of weeks of doing the math sheets, I knew the topics that I wasn't so good at and I focused most of my time and effort on those. That's the fastest way to improve. But the temptation is to work on the things that you're good at because it makes you feel better. I don't know if you play an instrument, but it's the same with that. It's much more satisfying to play over the bits that you know well and that sound good rather than working on the bits that don't sound very good. But if you want to improve quickly, work on the weakest points and don't do the other stuff. Step five, test yourself. Now, I think I must mention this in virtually every single video that I make, but it is the most effective way of learning. Testing yourself doesn't just uncover what you don't know, it actually teaches you. When I worked through those math sheets, I was testing myself on maths that I didn't know yet, and I was learning. So find a way of testing yourself as frequently as you can. Step six is feedback. Now this is more difficult if you're a self learner. I was lucky, I serendipitously found Mr. Simpson, but if you can find someone that can evaluate your work and give you feedback on it, that is incredibly useful and it will accelerate your ability to learn. Find your Mr. Simpson if you can. Step seven, don't take the answer for the answer. You need to know why the answer's right. You need to build your intuition and insight into the subject. It's not good enough just to know the answer. You've got to know why the answer's right. Why is this the solution? Why is this the right way of doing it? Why is the derivative of x squared 2x? 